Imagine this. You're waking up at night again, parched, gulping glass after glass of water. Yet the thirst never fades. You've barely fallen back asleep before you're rushing to the bathroom again. Morning comes, and instead of feeling rested, you're dragging your feet, yawning through meetings and blaming stress or poor sleep. But what if there's something more serious happening? For millions of people around the world, these daily annoyances aren't just bad habits. They're early signs of diabetes, a disease that often develops quietly before showing itself in serious ways. Here's the truth. You can't confirm diabetes just by symptoms. Some people show no warning signs at all until complications arrive. That's why doctors turn to specific tests. In today's video, we'll walk step-by-step -step through the four major diagnostic tests, explaining how each one works, what the results mean, and how you can prepare for them. By the end, you'll know exactly what's behind those numbers and why early testing is so important. Why testing matters. When people hear the word diabetes, they think only of high sugar levels. But diabetes is really about insulin, the key that unlocks your cells. Normally, when you eat, your food breaks down into glucose, which enters your bloodstream. Insulin then signals your cells to absorb that glucose and use it as energy. Without enough insulin, or if your body's cells stop responding to it properly, that sugar lingers in the blood. At first, you may not notice anything, but silently, damage is taking place. Excess sugar irritates blood vessels, stiffens arteries, injures nerves, and over time, can weaken your kidneys and harm your eyesight. That's why diabetes is called a silent disease. The most dangerous part is how long it can remain undetected. Some people only discover it after serious complications like a stroke or heart problem. Regular blood testing is more than routine. It's your safety net. It spots problems early, even before symptoms appear, giving you a chance to make changes before irreversible damage sets in. The four tests at a glance doctors don't rely on guesswork when it comes to diagnosing diabetes. Instead, they use four main tests, each shining a light on a different part of the puzzle. The first is the fasting plasma glucose test, or SPG, an affordable, widely used test that gives a quick baseline measurement. The second is the oral glucose tolerance test, or OGTT, this is often seen as the gold standard because it shows how your body handles a large dose of sugar over time, making it especially useful in pregnancy. The third is the random plasma glucose test, or RPGs, a quick anytime check often used in emergencies when symptoms are obvious and there's no time to prepare. Finally, there's the HbA1c test, sometimes called the average blood sugar test because it reflects your sugar control over the past two to three months offering the big picture rather than a single snapshot. Each test has strengths and weaknesses, but together they create a toolkit that helps doctors diagnose and manage diabetes with confidence. Test 1. Fasting Plasma Glucose, FPG. What it is. The FPG test is one of the simplest and most common ways to check for diabetes. It works by measuring your blood sugar after a period of fasting, usually overnight. Fasting means absolutely no food or calorie-containing drinks for at least 8 hours. Only plain water is allowed. That means no tea, no coffee, no snacks, not even fruit juice. The reason for this is simple. Food temporarily raises blood sugar. And the goal of this test is to see your body's natural baseline level without any outside interference. In the morning, when your body is at rest and fuel comes only from stored sources, a healthcare worker draws a blood sample, usually from a vein in your arm. That sample is then tested in a lab to measure glucose concentration. Because it's quick, inexpensive, and easy to standardize, the FPG is often the very first test a doctor orders when diabetes is suspected. How it works and results. Even when you're asleep, your body still needs energy. That's where the liver steps in. It slowly releases glucose into the bloodstream to fuel your brain and other vital organs. In a healthy system, insulin quietly does its job, guiding that sugar into your cells. But in diabetes or prediabetes, this balance is disrupted, 
Without effective insulin action, glucose piles up in the blood instead of being used for energy. That's why fasting glucose is such an important marker. Here's how results are interpreted. A reading under 100 mg per deciliter is normal. Between 100 and 125 mg per deciliter is classified as pre-diabetes. Your body is showing stress and risk is high. A result of 126 mg per deciliter or higher, confirmed on two separate tests, is diabetes. These cutoffs aren't random. They're based on decades of research linking glucose levels to future risk of complications. They act like thresholds, helping doctors spot trouble before it's too late. Pros and cons The FPG test has a lot going for it. It's inexpensive, quick to perform, and widely available, meaning almost every clinic and hospital in the world can run it. For that reason, it's often used in large screening programs. But like any tool, it has weaknesses. Because it only measures blood sugar at one point in time, it can miss spikes that happen after meals. It can also give misleading results if you didn't fast properly, if you're under a lot of stress, if you're fighting an infection, or even if you had a poor night's sleep. In other words, while it's a great first step, it doesn't always tell the whole story. That's why doctors often combine it with other tests to confirm the diagnosis and build a more complete picture of your blood sugar health. Test 2. Oral Glucose Tolerance Test, OGTT. What it is. The OGTT goes beyond just fasting. It actually tests how your body responds when challenged with sugar. The process starts the same way. An overnight fast, followed by a baseline blood sample. Then comes the challenge. You drink a solution containing 75 grams of glucose, dissolved in water. It's very sweet. Imagine drinking concentrated syrup in one go. After drinking, you wait, often sitting in the clinic for two hours without eating or drinking anything else. At the two-hour mark, another blood sample is taken. In a healthy body, insulin kicks in quickly, bringing blood sugar levels back down after the spike. But in diabetes, the sugar lingers, revealing that the body isn't processing it properly. It's essentially a stress test for your metabolism designed to uncover problems that fasting blood sugar alone might hide. Cutoffs and use cases. The results of an OGTT are simple but powerful. If your two hour reading is under 140 milligrams per deciliter, your glucose control is normal. Between 140 and 199 milligrams per deciliter points to pre-diabetes, meaning your body is struggling but hasn't tipped into full diabetes yet. A result of 200 mg per deciliter or more confirms diabetes. This test is particularly important for detecting gestational diabetes, diabetes that develops during pregnancy. Left untreated, it can cause complications for both mother and child. Doctors also turn to the OGTT when fasting glucose results are borderline or unclear, because it shows how your body behaves under real stress. In fact, Many people who appear normal on fasting tests may show hidden problems when given the glucose challenge. Strengths and Weaknesses The OGTT is considered the gold standard for a reason. It's one of the best tools for spotting prediabetes and catching issues early. It provides more detailed insight than fasting alone and is especially useful for high-risk patients. But it does require time and preparation making it less convenient for busy clinics or mass screenings. The sweet drink can also cause nausea in some people, and the two-hour wait isn't always practical. Still, when accuracy matters, especially in pregnancy, this test gives answers no other test can provide. It's a reminder that sometimes the most effective methods take a little more time and patience. Test 3. Random Plasma Glucose, RPG. Not every situation allows for fasting or waiting. That's where the random plasma glucose test comes in. As the name suggests, it can be done any time of day, regardless of when you last ate. Doctors often use it in emergency situations or when someone shows classic signs of diabetes, unquenchable thirst, frequent bathroom trips, unexplained weight loss, or sudden fatigue. A blood sample is drawn on the spot 
and if the result is 200 mg per deciliter or higher, combined with those symptoms, that's enough to diagnose diabetes right away. This makes RPG invaluable in urgent care or hospital settings, where decisions need to be made quickly. But here's the catch. If you don't have symptoms, the RPG isn't reliable for diagnosis on its own. In those cases, doctors always follow up with another test, like FPG or HbA1c, to confirm. Test 4. HbA1c, glycated hemoglobin. Unlike the other tests, which capture a single moment, the HbA1c test looks at the bigger picture. It measures the percentage of red blood cells that have sugar molecules stuck to them. Since red blood cells live about 120 days, this test reflects your average blood sugar over the past two to three months. That's why it's often called a report card for your blood sugar control. Even if you fast perfectly before an FPG or avoid sugar before an OGTT, the HbA1c still reveals the truth about your long-term trends. Doctors use it not only to diagnose diabetes, but also to monitor how well treatment plans are working over time. It's a powerful tool that moves beyond snapshots to show the bigger story, ranges and use. The HbA1c test is straightforward to interpret. Below 5.7% means normal blood sugar control. Between 5.7% and 6.4% points to pre-diabetes. You're not in the danger zone yet, but you're heading there. A result of 6.5% or higher is diagnostic for diabetes. One big advantage is convenience. You don't need to fast or schedule it at a particular time of day. That's why it's one of the most commonly used tests around the world. But like all tests, it isn't perfect. Conditions such as anemia, recent blood transfusion, or genetic variations in hemoglobin can skew results, making them look better or worse than reality. That's why many doctors prefer to use HbA1c alongside fasting or OGTT tests for the most accurate picture possible. Let's recap the four tests we've explored. Fasting plasma glucose, or FPG, is quick, affordable, and widely used, but only captures one moment. Oral glucose tolerance test, or OGTT, is the gold standard for catching prediabetes and gestational diabetes, but takes time and preparation. Random plasma glucose, or RPG, is fast and life-saving when symptoms are clear, but it's unreliable without them. HbA1c gives a 2-3 to three month average and is excellent for monitoring treatment progress, though it can be affected by other blood conditions. Each test has strengths, each has limitations, but when combined, they provide a comprehensive, reliable diagnosis. Together, they help doctors not just detect diabetes, but also guide long-term care. The key takeaway is this, no single test is perfect, but together they form a powerful toolkit that allows doctors to diagnose diabetes early and manage it effectively. If your results suggest prediabetes or diabetes, don't panic, take action. Lifestyle changes, medication, and regular monitoring can prevent complications and even improve your health. Remember, this video is for education only. Always consult a qualified doctor for personalized advice. Early diagnosis isn't just about numbers, it's about protecting your future. In our next video, we'll clear up one of the most common questions. What's the real difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Subscribe and stay tuned, because understanding the difference could change how you see this condition forever.